And welcome to this week's Buzzline, a production of CRM Sports. We're at Buffalo's Cafe, Cumming, Georgia, and we're talking a big win over the North Carolina Tar Heels this week. I'm John Rawl, joined by the publisher of GoJackets.com, Jonathan Lifeite. And Jonathan, what's the good word? Well, to hell with Georgia, of course. And the other good word? Well, to hell with North Carolina yeah. as well. <laughs> yeah. What an impressive win for the Jackets. It really almost goes down as domination in this one. Almost? Almost. Well, I mean, they could have had like 100 points. It could have been 50 to 7, if that's yeah. what you're or saying. It could have been more like Cumberland. Well, let's not get carried away. As bad as North Carolina is, they're not Cumberland bad. Okay. <laughs> well, there was a, a very good day at the office for Paul Johnson and the Ramblin' Wreck as they pick up a very impressive ACC win against a team, let's be honest, that's given the Jackets fits the last few years. Yeah, they have had our number. I think they've averaged about uh, close to 45 points a game against the Jackets in the previous three meetings. So, Really, 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 really nice to see us uh, hold them to seven. And let's point out that seven came very late in the yes. game, and it was really inconsequential at that point. And we'll so. talk about the great defensive effort. Ted Roof's unit once again looking impressive in ACC play. And we'll talk about, hey, the Jackets get to take a breather this week. So we'll have all that more on this week's Buzz Line from Buffalo's Cafe coming. <laughs> What's that? You still having a problem? It's just slow. I'm going to switch to my. I know this one will work. Of course, I may have like. Oh, of course, I let the battery run down on it like an idiot. Oh, okay. I normally have a cable, but I'm using it on my iPhone over there. Yeah, so I guess I got to deal with it. All right, starting back with our next segment here on this week's Buzz Line. And we're back at Buffalo's Cafe and coming. And at this Buffalo's Cafe, you'll find 27 television sets. Not a bad spot anywhere in here to come watch Georgia Tech Miami in a few days or any other jacket contest on the gridiron or basketball is not too far away. They have 14 metro locations of Buffalo Cafe, and we're glad that this location in coming serves as the host of Buzzline each and every week with the publisher of GoJackets.com, Jonathan Leifheit, wearing his dapper The Hive GoJackets.com shirt once again. I'm John Rawl sitting alongside this beautiful shirt that I'm jealous of. <laughs> we're talking Georgia Tech sports, and hey, the one jack a, it's one of a kind, I'll add. Is it really? Yes, I thought you is. got that at Walmart. Uh, no, those aren't available at Walmart <laughs> yet. Yet. Well, they need to. I see too much of another school's content in there, and it would be nice to have a little white and gold. Oh, yeah. There's always too much of that other color. Yeah, okay. Well, they actually have two colors. Uh, but uh, white and gold are the best com combination in Georgia without question. All right, talking Georgia Tech football, a win over North Carolina, and it was a beautiful High noon, toe meets leather kickoff for the Jackets, and they came out and looked like they had their their minds set on a great win as they were able to pull off the victory over Larry Fedora's hapless heels. North Carolina, the, the wheels seem to be falling off of the UNC Tar Heels. Not that we're going to get a lot of sympathy out of uh, Jacket Nation. I think it was two wins in a row they'd had over Georgia Tech. Three wins Three in a row. And, and I'll tell you, I, I'm not going to give them a lot of sympathy because – because I remember in 2015 when Georgia Tech had a comparable run of injuries, um, did we get any sympathy out of the Tar Heel Nation for the amount of injuries we've had? No, we did not. So, you know what? They can deal with it. That's their problem. Uh, they've got injuries. Um, and uh, we, we've had to deal with it ourselves. So they're probably going to suffer through a, a, a season just like we did in 2015. 33-7 the final from Bobby Dodge Stadium. And as Jonathan pointed out in our show open, it was a shutout until – the reserve units came in there and tried to keep them off the board. Well, I think it was the, the, the actually the, the uh, sequence before the reserves went in, but there were definitely a couple of second teamers in there. But I think at that point um, they had started to lose focus because there was no way on God's green earth that they were that the uh, the heels were coming back at that point. So really at that point the, the the game had already been pretty much determined. It was out of hand. So they allowed the seven. But I sure would have liked to have seen that big <laughs> goose egg up there. I tell yeah. you. Well, it was a, a, a all-around good effort. And let's do something we don't often do on the show. Let's start talking a little defense first. Ted Roof, the 
uh, Mike here in the audience, our, our dynamic duo that's with us each and every week here, joining us, our support staff here at Buzzline. <laughs> Uh, he said the roof is not leaking. No, it's not. It's it's been pretty darn good. Now, I will I will tell you. I, I alluded to the uh, Tar Heel injuries. They've had a huge amount, and we've also had Pitt and we've had Jack State. Those three, all three of them, they've been held to pretty much a, you know, seventeen, ten, and seven. Um, so they have done a fantastic job. None of them are offensive juggernauts, but you know what? As I've mentioned in previous weeks, how many times have we seen a a second-rate offensive team come in and and get themselves well against the jacket defense in recent years, and it's really nice to see. Uh, it's it's good to put your your uh, your foot on somebody's throat and keep them down, and that's exactly what this defense did. And and I want to point out especially uh, the the performance of AJ Gray. He had uh, two interceptions on the day. One of them was a huge uh, a huge interception. Georgia Tech had just fumbled the ball on the ensuing play. He picks the ball off and gives it right back, and then that followed up with. Uh, Cervante Benson's uh, electric 63-yard run for a touchdown. So um, defense really set the tone today. I felt like the offense left some things out there, but they did a fantastic job of, of holding the heels. I think they ended up with you know, about 250 yards or something like that, which is just a ridiculous amount in these days and times, especially when considering the heels have been scoring 45-plus you know, on the, the Jackets the last three years. Well, last year the Hills had that high-powered offense led by Trubisky, and he's moved on to the Chicago Bears now. And, I mean, did they not realize this guy might leave and they just didn't have a good backup plan at quarterback? Well, them? actually, if I'm not mistaken, they did have a, a, a guy, and I can't remember his name, that was a pretty good player. But he ended up having some family issues and actually ended up having to transfer or get okay. back home. So they had that. On top of that, Trubisky did go probably a year earlier than they expected. Um, then you look at they lost, uh, I think, uh, Logan, T.J. Logan and Elijah Hood. Both of them are, were running backs in that offense. Guess where they went? The NFL. So that's their running backs that went. Um, and then they had a number of wide receivers that uh, ended up uh, graduating, and a couple of them went to the NFL. And then you can add up the number of wide receivers. I think I think they were actually down to to only one or two receivers that had actually had a catch uh, in two, 2016 this year. Come, uh, you know, coming into this year, they lost Austin Prohl. They lost another couple guys their their injury list was ridiculous coming into this game so they really were depleted in a big way well give unc some credit they have done a good job recruiting and i assume that most of fedora's recruits have been valid unlike yeah. other years yeah they were they were all good okay and he's run a he himself has done an okay job well yeah if you look at their their recruiting rankings they've generally been kind of in that top uh, well, actually, they've been kind of top 30, I would say. So it's not like they're they're recruiting, uh, you know, the top of the line, but they're also not been horrible either. But all the drama that's going on in the UNC athletic oh. department, that, that really has nothing to do with the current regime, yeah. does it? No, Fedora had no participation in that in his defense. That was really, in my opinion, more top down than it was, really? uh, you know, anywhere else. That that was administration doing all kinds of funny things with, with certain programs and allowing it to continue. And then the athletes just took advantage of what the administration was already doing. So in my opinion, uh, you know, they're not getting punished nearly enough for what they're doing. They had their accreditation threatened by the uh, Southern Accreditation uh, SACS, I think is the, the organization. Um, and uh, But nothing's come of it yet. Uh, however, they did have the, uh, the NCAA should probably be ruling on what's going to happen to them I would guess in the next uh, in the next two to three months. So I think all the final back and forth has been done. So we'll know kind of what's going to happen to them kind of okay. coming up soon. All right. Well, I set all that up basically to allow the victory. It's not like they're severely penalized right now with they're that not. football program. Uh, they yes, they lost some talent, and to their credit, they went on to the NFL. Most of them. But uh, North Carolina's had a, quite a run here in the last couple of years. Yeah, and, if you and go back to that 2015 season, I think they won 11 games that year. So they've had a pretty good program and a pretty good team. Um, I think last year they won, uh, I want to say, eight or nine. I can't remember exactly what their record was last year. But, again, it was a, it was a good season. They had a, a, good, a good program. So, you know, watching them fall off the map like this has been kind of a, it's been kind of a shock. But when you look at the amount, amount of players they've lost to injury, um, you know, it was it was just like with Georgia Tech. We lost our, our skill players in 2015, and then the guys that were expected to back them up 
all went down with injuries as well. And they're going through exactly the same thing. They lost a tremendous amount of talent, and then the guys that were backing them up have all gone down with, with injuries. All right. Well, all that means what we are getting to the gist is – Georgia Tech beat what should be a good football program that's not hampered by NCAA probation, et cetera. Yet. Yet, but that doesn't uh, excuse what happened uh, to their program as of 2017. A good win. That is the point. Georgia Tech got a great win, a division win, and they can move on along. Next on the division list is the Miami Hurricanes. We'll talk about that matchup as we continue on with this week's show. That's going to happen in two weeks. But we'll continue dissecting the victory over the hills when we come back to Buffalo's Cafe coming. This is Buzzline. Okay. All right, we'll uh, take a very short pause for the calls, and we'll return with more Buzzline. So hang around, you all.
all right. Hey, nature calls sometimes. Yep. All right, everybody, we're getting ready to start back in this segment. We'll hear from the man, I won't say upstairs, but uh, I'm sure he has a second floor office, doesn't he, Paul Johnson? Uh, he has a, an office overlooking the stadium, overlooking the, the field. Okay. So, yes, it is upstairs. Like he opens up a curtain. He could open up a sliding door and walk out. He's and, on the end zone where yeah. the upper deck is? Okay. Yeah, he's kind of between the upper deck and the uh, – has, has he ever called you into his office? No, he's not. <laughs> okay. I have never been in his office, but I'd like to. But sometime. you've seen pictures. Yes, I have seen pictures, and I actually could probably find it from the inside of the stadium and get in there to it. But what floor do you know? I have no idea exactly okay. what floor it's considered. All right. What's the nickname for the athletic department? It's the – well, it's the, where they are located, it's the Edge Building. Yeah, but don't they have an affectionate nickname for the administration? The Georgia Tech Athletic Association? Well, no, more than that. Mm -hmm. uh, th I thought they had like an insider, like uh, – Maybe his message board for where I saw it or something. No. It's, okay. It's just just the ed Well, a lot of people call it the, the edge, edge because okay. that's the edge building. I got you. Y'all, uh, speaking of that building, do you still plan to have this uh, year in 2018 a some kind of GoJackets.com event down there? Well, we, we usually we go down there and cover signing day. Okay. Um, now, this year might be a little different because, and for what it's worth, we have the new early signing day. Yeah. So I don't know how that's going to work. We're just going to kind of have to play it by ear and figure it out. I do know the number of the players are planning to sign on in February just because that's what they've always done and some of their schools have events planned. But we'll, we'll probably be down there. I'm just not sure how we're going to do it yet. All right. We'll get started and uh, continue talking about the win over the Heels. He has an office overlooking the stadium, overlooking the, the field. Okay. So, yes, it is upstairs. Like he opens up a – Curtain. He could open up a sliding door and walk out. And we are back in with Buzzline. I'm John Rawl, joined by GoJackets.com yeah, kind of publisher the, uh, and czar, Jonathan <laughs> Leifheit. No, and we're at Buffalo's <laughs> Cafe, 1175 Buford Highway in like coming. And this is just off yes, exit 14 off of Georgia 400. And, and it's also known out here as Highway 20, Buford Highway. Come on by and see us here when we do the show each week. Or certainly come by anytime. They have a friendly staff as a Georgia Tech friendly place and we encourage you to come have all the delicious food and more later i'm going to ask jonathan i saw him munching on some chicken before we started i'm going to ask him exactly what he had and he has to break it all down for us and uh get get a get a you're going to love what i had by the way. oh okay good carolina wings yes carolina fire barbecue wings because guess what we have pretty much uh, <laughs> well, you know i know you love to talk barbecue well, we, we and since we're in a good mood on this week show okay. after uh, nice yes. uh, we won't take too much time, but uh, in case you don't know, and I'm picking on you because I know you know, so North Carolina is known for vinegar-based barbecue, kind of yep. and my out. native South Carolina is mustard-based, kind of like your Georgia Tech gold shirt. Right. Okay, you know that. Yes, I do. All right, thank you. And there's places in Georgia that serve delicious North and South Carolina barbecue, and I guess Georgia is sitting there saying, we've got to come up with our own barbecue flavor color. Uh, and I know most Georgians probably eat a ketchup base, but uh, it, it depends. You can okay. get it, it to your point. Um, we are back and if you want to watch something John funny, go look for Rhett and Link on YouTube. And Rhett and Link, Link. yes, <laughs> the barbecue song. And we're at Buffalo's Cafe. Okay, one, one, and, and, and play that, and they will go through and give you a rundown of the barbecue. Um, as they call it, Georgia's kind of a barbecue melting pot. So, uh, so we get a lot of things. So we have it typically though. Um, it's a vinegar base, but a little more tomato -y. So it's more of a vinegar tomato kind of combo than, than in a lot of places. It's not the pure vinegar you get. Pure, more pure vinegar you get up in North Carolina. I see. Well, I, I like it all, to be honest, and I think you would agree with that. Yeah, well, I like to, I, I do. I try them all, I eat them all. And whenever they get ready to pull, push the button at the prison, whenever I have my last meal, Carolina I will be eating barbecue. Yes, absolutely. Fire barbecue. And that would be the button to, to electrocute me, by the way. <laughs> right. If they still do that, I don't know. Uh, well, we're talking Georgia Tech. Win over North Carolina. I was looking at the number of plays in this game. Georgia Tech had uh, just over 60. I was a little surprised the Heels had a little bit over 50 total plays in this game. I, I was surprised they had as much time with the ball. I Actually, I thought it was 74 to 58, but maybe I'm wrong on that. I saw somewhere. I, maybe I It's definitely 58. Had barbecue on my mind. 
Uh, 76 to 58. Okay. Seven, okay, so there were uh, several more. I see something where it says Georgia Tech ran. Okay, they ran 65 plays. Does yep. that mean they ran it and didn't Barbecue pass it? Like Correct. Color. There was 66 uh, rushes total. I think there was one of them was considered a team rush. I got 65 total rushes and then also 10 pass plays. So a total okay. of a 75, 76. I thought that number looked a w little strange because we know that Georgia Tech historically dominates an opponent from a time of possession and, and plays even. Yep. Especially when you kill them like Georgia Tech did. And, and I'll give the uh, credit to the Georgia Tech Athletic Association, which we just teased a minute ago. The official website's uh, title, the, the lead <laughs> for the story they had on the story, Georgia, uh, Jackets um, Stomp Hills. Bag, I mean, they, they kind of uh, – didn't didn't hold back. Sounds yeah. like a sounds like a four year old yeah. throwing a pitch throwing a hissy fit, huh? <laughs> well, I mean, usually the official athletic schools kind of take more of a high road uh, sure. southern gentleman yeah. approach, but I guess uh, I like maybe there's some bad blood between the jackets and the hills, and, and there probably should be. Yeah, there probably should be. I mean, uh, it's, it's funny because you talked about that, and and the the guys over at Inside Carolina, who's our our, uh, our sister over on the on the Scout slash CBS network, uh, do a fantastic fantastic job. Uh, they probably Georgia have the, the, the biggest the staff, staff and the largest Georgia subscriber had, base on the whole, the whole network, and they do a great job. A but I listened to a few of their podcasts, and, and I tell you, boy, they hate Paul Johnson over there. Do they? I actually, oh, do they ever. And they, 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 they think his blocking schemes are dirty, and I, I listen to all that, and I just laugh, and I laugh, and I laugh, and then I, then after the game, I laugh some more. So, you know, you know. I'm tired of this shot block stuff. I mean, yeah, if, if, it's, if it's illegal, make it illegal. And, and, call, and call it. Call it every time. And Georgia yeah, Tech probably would not keep up the same option offense. Well, but everybody would run. end up having something different because I guess what? I, I, I had a nickel for every time I, I, I watched okay. North Carolina cut block. I thought that number looked a little they do just strange as much as we do. We know that Georgia Tech every did, did they get called? No, no, neither one of us got called okay. for a chop block. Okay. So, but, you know, they, Especially you know, but they cut block as much as Georgia Tech does. But, you know, when we do it, it's dirty. When they do it, well, they have better technique and they're clean. And you can Just listen to now, the podcast. For I, I don't claim to be some expert on the rule Sykes. of chop blocks, uh, but title. isn't there a, the, the, story the field, the way it's broken down, uh, that, that, that you, you can do certain things? Well, you can't. Chop blocks are, are a combination of high and low. So they, they, you have two guys. So it's of, basically uh, a double team. One of them back. goes for the like chest a, area and the other one goes like for the board. legs. So you can't do that. I thought that <laughs> something well, I mean, usually the similar to that is allowed in a certain area of the field. Well, you can block. You can. The there's no uh, restrictions on blocking low for a single road, player uh, within the tackle box. Okay. Uh, so you can I, I, basically, you know, do whatever you want, dive yeah. with their knees, dive yeah. with their legs, dive, dive wherever you want, block, yeah, block them straight up, should. however you want to do it within the tackle box. Uh, then once you get outside the tackle box, then you've got restrictions on – on what the, you can do below the waist. So, Carolina, you know, you can't block or, uh, behind the back below the waist. That would be a clip. Um, um, you, and uh, you can't you can't actually CBS block below the waist from the side. That would be uh, that's a crack back block. That that's illegal lead. as well. When you do a cut block from outside the tackle box, you basically have to be straight up with them and hit them below the waist. I mean, hit, and then hit them below the waist. So I think it's between 10 and 2 o'clock. If you have any kind of an angle outside of that, it's illegal. Okay. Right. So there are some rules around cut blocks and when you can use them and when you can't. And guess what? We rarely, if ever, get called for violating those. Does it happen? Yeah. Just, there's always going to be somebody that's going to, you know, have to return at the last second. And they'll get get them and that type of thing. It, it happens, but it doesn't happen with us any than any more than anybody else. Okay. Well, let me ask you this: just if it, it, going through your incredible brain here, you don't see me giving you a proper credit here. Oh, jeez. Going through the archives of your brain, can you? Dig up any example well, of Georgia Tech shot blocking that led to an injury? No. Okay. Now, um, the closest that I can come to is that uh, last year when we played Kentucky, they did have one of their one of their linemen did get injured, but it had nothing to do with either a cut block or a chop block. Okay. But it made the coach pissed off, and he was not happy about it. And I think there might have been a Virginia Tech player about 10 years ago, circa 2008 or 9. Some ish expert on that had a rule that of did, blocks. Um, did right. get Isn't there a, injured, the, the and I'll tell you why he got injured. And it's down, the exact that, same that, thing. That, it's a, the same thing that Paul things. Johnson talks about. Well, you can't. Chop One thing you can't do on a cut, you, you, on a chop block, it's a high-low combination. They, but they have two guys.
if know, one guy is not trying to block the defender and he reaches out and grabs him, the like chest area and the other, one and the other guy cuts him from below, so that's not a chop block. I thought and so what a lot of teams have, have resorted to is doing is is they will attempt to grab our offensive linemen as they go by, and then they'll get cut by the other guy that's intending to block him, and then they'll claim that was a chop block. When actually... That uh, guy so that they grabbed was not going to block them. They were going want, for a linebacker. Knees, so what they do is is try and hold up the guy want, and then get a cut block and then complain. Okay. Well, the actuality is is what they're doing is illegal because that's defensive holding and they're getting their guy and they're getting their guy in position to get hurt. So they shouldn't be doing that because they're the ones getting their own guy hurt by doing that. I see. All right. Well, uh, if you don't know much about the rules of NCAA football, this is the guy you want to have. Well, it's funny because with this offense and the complaints about the, that, I have become really familiar. And every year when we would go up to the ACC, um, Doug Rhodes, who was the former head of, of, the, of the referees, would always have a session. And uh, Rod and I spent a pretty good bit of time trying to understand how this stuff worked. And, and, so, and then they made some rule changes that I mentioned about going around and how they, how they allow you to block you know, outside the tackle box, inside the tackle box. So it's, it's, this is a topic that is one that I have gone out and purposefully studied and purposefully talked yeah, to people who would know, there's always gonna be some in particular Doug Rhodes, and, and now his, I haven't had a chance, I haven't had a need to go back and revisit it because they haven't made any rule changes in several years. So, Okay. All right, one thing of note from this win over UNC, in the Pitt game there were four turnovers by the Jackets. This game, two, Taquan Marshall, a fumble, but the good news is for the Jackets it didn't take but a half a second and they had the ball back after an interception. Yeah, so the, the, yeah, the first one was, uh, was Taquan Marshall, the and then A.J. Gray followed that up with the interception. interception. Um, but, yeah, those fumbles have got to gotta stop that. I mean, this is um, – I'm going to use what, what Paul Johnson said last week. Against a good team, it's going to hurt him. Did we go to Miami? No, he didn't say that this Saturday, did he? Yeah, he didn't have to. Okay. He said that against Pitt, and I think that had something to do with going through the illegal block stuff that we just talked about. I got you. So, but he didn't have to. Everybody knows you know, UNC is not a good team, and if we continue to turn the ball over against a good team, it's going to hurt us. Okay. Well, uh, the great Paul Johnson speaks. And speaking of Paul Johnson, I, I didn't see the video of this, but uh, I think I'm right on this. Didn't he chime in with some of the – one thing We're going to talk about this later in the show, just as a tease. Didn't he chime in, or was this fake fake news I was reading on the whole controversy about the apparel companies? Yes, he had a very funny quip. That's a, that's we'll, and we'll hold that. And it wasn't. A, I wasn't sure if somebody was just uh, making that up or if it was true. I never heard it or, or saw it, but it is true. Yes. And we'll uh, we'll keep you glued to your set to uh, hear that as we roll on with this week's show. So the Jackets, great win over North Carolina. We'll come back, wrap up this victory. We'll hear from Coach Paul Johnson. When and much, much more from Buffalo's Cafe coming. This is Buzzline. So what they do is, is try and hold up the guy. Oh, you didn't? And then get a cut block. I gave, I gave you two of them, by the way. So they're also illegal because that's defensive holding, and they're getting their guy and they're getting their guy in position to get hurt. So they shouldn't be doing that because they're the ones getting their own guy hurt by doing that. I see. All right. Well, uh, if you don't know much about the rules of NCAA football, this is the guy you want to have. Well, it's funny because with this offense and the complaints about the, that, I have become really familiar. And every year when we would go up to the ACC, um, Doug Rhodes, who was the former head of, of, the, of the referees, would always have a session. And uh, Rod and I spent a pretty good bit of time trying to understand how this stuff worked. And, and so, and then they made some rule changes that okay. I mentioned about so going around and how they, how they allow you to block, you know, outside the tackle box, inside the tackle box. So, it's, it's this is a topic that is one that I have gone out and purposefully studied and purposefully talked to people who would know. In particular, Doug Rhodes, and, and now his. I haven't had a chance. I haven't had a need to go back and visit it because they haven't made any rule changes in several years. So. Okay. All right, one thing of note from this win over UNC. In the Pitt game, there were four turnovers by the Jackets. This game, two, Taquan Marshall, a fumble. But the good news is for the Jackets, it didn't take but a half a second, and they had the ball back after an interception. Yeah, so the, yeah, the first one was uh, Taquan Marshall, and then A.J. Gray followed that up with the interception. interception. Um, but, yeah, those were
No. Um, but he said last week, against a good team, it's going to hurt him. Did we go to Miami? No, he didn't say that this Saturday. He, did he? he didn't have to. <laughs> he said that again. I think that had with the okay. elite that we've been talking about. I got you. So, but he didn't have to. Everybody knows, you know, UNC is not a good team, and if we continue to turn the ball over against a good team, it's going to hurt us. Okay. Well, uh, the great Paul Johnson speaks. And speaking of Paul Johnson, I, I didn't see the video of this, but uh, I think I'm right on this. Didn't he chime in with some of the – we're going to talk about this later in the show, just as a tease. Chime in, it's fake news I was reading on the whole controversy about the apparel companies? Yes, he had a very funny quip. Uh, that's a, that's and we'll hold that. And it wasn't, a, I, I wasn't sure if somebody was just uh, making that up or if it was true, because I never heard it or, or saw it, but it is true. Yes. And we'll, uh, we'll keep you glued to your set to uh, hear that as we roll on with this week's show. So the Jackets, great win over the wrap up this week. Buffalo's Cafe coming. This is Buzzline. So what they do is is try and hold up the guy. Oh, you did? And then get a cut block. I gave I gave you two of them by the way. So that's the fence holding, and they're getting their guy in, and they're getting their guy in position to get hurt. So they shouldn't be doing that because they're the ones. All right. Well, uh, if you don't know much about the rules of NCAA football, this is the guy you want to have. Well, it's funny because with this offense and the complaints about that, I have become really. All right, uh, now starting another segment with the great Mr. Lifehite. <laughs> and back we are at Buffalo's Cafe coming, where we talk Georgia Tech sports each and every week here on Buzzline. And we want to remind you here at Buffalo's, they have Bash Night, All You Can Eat Wings, every Monday and Wednesday 14.99. You know, Jonathan, you and I kind of live here, but when yep. uh, if you're going to live here, you might as well enjoy bash night on Monday and Wednesdays, 14.99. All you can eat wings. There you go. I mean, how much better can you get than that? I, I will tell you, those Carolina Fire barbecue wings I had were pretty darn good. Uh, everything from Carolina's good, except for North Carolina. Yeah. All right. So the Jackets get a victory over the hills this past weekend, and we're going to hear from Paul Johnson now. Post game, we'll get some thoughts from the head coach of the Jackets. Uh, I know you've heard his post-game presser, Jonathan. Anything? We're only going to hear a snippet. Anything that uh, you want to add before we hear from the coach? Well, yeah, we have a, a clip from uh, from uh, Taquan Marshall and AJ Gray coming up, and uh, folks that really need to listen to what Coach Johnson has to say about uh, one the defense and then to two around AJ Gray. Um, Johnson is not one to, to give out compliments very easily or even be very effusive in his praise. So. When he has just a one-liner that really pays tribute to how well the defense plays, and, and A.J. Gray in particular, mm -hmm. it means something. And uh, I just wanted to point that out. All right. Very well set up by Jonathan Leifheit. All right. Here's Coach Paul Johnson, post-UNC, on Buzzline. Well, any time that you can uh, get a conference win, I'm pleased. I thought that, uh, you know, for the most part, our defense played really well again. And offensively, we made enough plays. We weren't uh, – went pretty – but we made some plays, and, uh, it, you know, I guess if you can rush the ball for 400 yards, you usually win most of the games. But uh, He's so funny. <laughs> the fumbles were disappointing. We worked really hard on that last week. They were both on call plays. There was no reads, no nothing. It's just one was reaching the ball out, and the other was just being careless with it. And we missed some huge opportunities in the passing game. I mean, we had a double move that we should have been a touchdown, and we overthrew. Uh, and... Uh, we struggled. We had both our starting offensive tackles out, and I think we'll start to get them back next week, both Andrew Marshall and Jahazel, and that'll help. Uh, so uh, it was uh, good to get a win. Can you talk a little bit about A.J. Gray? It seems like you're finally I thought A.J., as I, I told somebody walking in, I thought A.J. played probably as well as he's played. Some of their uh, run pass stuff, he, he was right on cue with it. He, Stepped underneath the slants and got a couple of picks, and uh, you know it's good to see him make plays because he's got a lot of ability. Plus, he made a couple of nice plays in open field on tackles. So proud of AJ. I thought he played well. That's another another strong weekend off the field on third down, two for twelve. 
Yeah, that's great. And when that happens, I think we had a 17 play drive, an 18 play drive. And when you look look at the thing, they ran 58 plays. Play, time play of possession was okay. Talk killed about that. again. You know, it was uh, unless you do something crazy. If you hold the ball for 38 minutes, most of the time you're going to win. What has changed really with this defense since uh, that Tennessee second half? Uh, yeah, you know, I don't know. I think we're playing better. We're tackling better. Uh, you know, they hadn't been scoring a bunch of points. So, uh, but, uh, you know, we hadn't give up other than the one double move there at the end. We hadn't give up a lot of big plays. So, uh, and I think that, like I said, we're being able to stop the run with some blitzes and stunts and some, some of that. And, Makes it hard if teams don't run the ball. Competition level was going to move way up on offense next game. And that was Coach Paul Johnson after the win over North Carolina this past weekend. Jonathan Life at GoJackets.com. You wanted to point out about those lengthy drives. Yeah. That first half, uh, I had 18 play, and I believe it was a few seconds short of nine minutes, mm -hmm. resulting in a touchdown, and then a 17 play drive. And it was right around eight minutes. Uh, I think it was just under eight minutes, which resulted in a field goal. Think about that. 35 plays, roughly just shy of uh, 16 minutes. That was just the first half. <laughs> so, I mean, and so 16 out of 30, two drives. That was very good. And and I think one thing that we've complained and, and looked at in the in the past is, when you play a team that's a little more talented, sometimes you have to be able to, to sustain a drive yeah. and play without and, and not make mistakes throughout the course of it. And guess what? That's what they did is they did uh, two massive drives. That was, uh, I believe, the, the first game ever that Georgia Tech has had more than 17, two 17 pl or more play drives in, the, in, their, in a game. So very impressive. It bodes well because at some point you're going to have to sustain a drive, take four to five yards a pop. And, and live with it, and and I think that's one thing they they did do did do well. Did have a few second and longs and third and longs that they managed to convert in there, so it wasn't all just chipping away. Mm -hmm. But still, very very impressive uh, what they did. All right, I got to ask an honest question here, Mr. Lifeite. It's a 17 play drive. It's a high noon kickoff on a warm day in Atlanta, Georgia. The Jackets kind of in, in parts of this game have the game in control. Do you, do you ever eyes on? Do you ever, you ever do this? No, no, never. I, I I'm, love. I'm dozing off if you're not watching. I'm I'm a uh, never doing that because <laughs> uh, there's nothing I like more than it. To me, it's like watching. Uh, it's like watching Chinese water torture. Drip, 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 drip. <laughs> and, and I can't. I'll be honest. Team, I've never seen Chinese water torture. Well, you know, but that's exactly what happens. It's just drip, drip, drip. And I think there's another old funny saying about uh, uh, the option is like Novocaine. Just give it time. It'll work. And that's what that's what it did, and it did, they just chewed up some. That was a, a two massive massive time-consuming drives that really, you know, set up the stage for later in the game when you can you know wear them down further and then start popping some big plays. And guess what? Mm -hmm. That's what happened. We're going to hear now from uh, quarterback Taquan Marshall and AJ Gray, who we heard Coach Johnson brag about. He had two interceptions in this game, and they were very key because at least on one of them, the J Jackets Marshall. The Marshall plan had just fumbled, and yep. they were able to get the ball right back. But a great combination of quarterback and defensive playmaker that we're going to hear from now. And, Jonathan, take a wild guess who gets to ask the first question in this clip. Rod McKenzie. Rod McKenzie, GoJackets.com. You're the lucky winner. And here is that post-game press conference now with a little bit of a selection of those players, their feedback after the victory over the Hills. Hey, Jay, do you feel like – you're at the point in your career now where you can do use your athletic ability, everything's instinct. You don't have to think about what you're doing out there. It seems like you're playing a lot looser out there. Yeah, no, because I know all the plays and that just allow me, I know my job, so that allows me to play fast and just do things. So, Juan, uh, I know uh, last week someone called you by far the best option quarterback in America. Uh, how, how does that feel? Do you think that you're the best option quarterback in the country? Uh, well, I always have stuff that I need to work on and improve on. I mean, I don't really look at it that way. I just go in to every week just ready to work and practice hard so on Saturday I can just put out what I've been practicing. You were kind of hard on yourself. With your performance last week, kind of how do you feel like you did in this 
Um, average. Yeah, I mean, I turned the ball over, missed some throws early. So, I mean, it was a step up from last week, but still not where I want to be. AJ, uh, basically, uh, going into the season, of course, the more you guys get a chance to be on the field together and, and working together, do you feel like everything's going to kind of slow down a little bit for you to read the cup a little faster? Oh, yeah, everything slowed down from freshman year because freshman year, everything was going real fast mm -hmm. and my eyes were everywhere, but now I put my eyes where they're supposed to be and just play. And that was two of Georgia Tech's great playmakers, Taquan Marshall, A.J. Gray, after the victory over North Carolina, a victory that gives the Jackets a 2-0 mark in ACC play. And the season really has been very good, uh, other than a collapse late in a, a game against Tennessee. And my goodness, what in a, I don't want to belabor a point, but Tennessee looked uh, absolutely awful to a abysmal. team. Abysmal to this uh, team la this past weekend, and that doesn't help the Jackets out too much. No. But the Jackets control their destiny, and so wins over Clemson in the coming weeks and Miami and all the other opponents that are yep. still left, Virginia Tech, that uh, that Tennessee game will be a long way in the rearview mirror, hopefully. Yeah, but I tell you, I, the, every, as the season goes along, I, I, I know players are going to look back at that one and continue to kick themselves over and over over that because, man, they should have had that one. Yeah. Absolutely should have had it. Without question. All right, we'll take a break. Eric's taking care of us here at Buzzline, and we'll take a moment to take a break and come right back to talk more Georgia Tech sports. And the sporting world was taken aback, you could say, this past week with all the crazy stuff going on at Louisville, Auburn, with the basketball. Does that affect the Jackets? Does that have any impact on Georgia Tech's athletic program. In fact, we'll get to what Paul Johnson had to say about it right after the time out here on Buzzline from CRM Sports. And I do have some impacts. So some what? I got some things to talk about. Oh, about that? Yeah. Okay, good. I don't think I don't think it's easy. I don't think it's that easy to reopen the deal, though. Yeah. Mm. Can I get another coke, please? Thank you. All right, Jonathan, Johnny Boy. Oh, do that one. Oh, I hate that name. <laughs> oh. Well, I. You and I share the same name, right? Legally. Yep. And on my headstone, it will say Jonathan, spelled the same way as yours. So well, when, there's you, only when one you come way, by and see it. There's only one correct way to spell it, you know. So Okay. But uh, <laughs> you're Johnny Boy. I'm Johnny Reb. Oh, All right. There you go. We'll take a break. We'll start back here on both lines. You can have the other one. I'm not taking the former. Okay. Billy Yank, that's who you are. All right. Uh, no. Here we go. We're at Buzz Line, and we're at Buffalo's Cafe, and we are in coming where you can come by and have a great meal. Jonathan, before we forget, you had the Carolina barbecue. Carolina Fire barbecue wings. And was that boneless or with, no, with those bone? No, those were with bones. Those are traditional wings. Okay, and I think I saw maybe a couple fries on your plate. I did have some fries. Okay. I'm not usually a fry guy, but I needed something else that was Needed a little more than fry, a little more than just wings today. Okay. Well, and they were delicious. All right. And well, as I mentioned, I'm not normally a fry guy, so if they were delicious, then that's well, a good time. What kind of guy are you? Uh, I usually prefer something a little healthier than that. Oh, come on. You're going to pass away probably one day. Yeah, well. <laughs> probably. There is a, there, well, it's true. I actually, pr I would actually prefer a salad or, or broccoli to that. Oh, man. I do not, I'm not, like I said, I'm not a big fry guy. Okay. Well, we won't hold that against you. They have. Salads here and more at Buffalo's. Come on out. We're just off uh, exit 14 and coming. It's uh, Georgia 400. Go to exit 14 and uh, come on down to 1175 Buford Highway. You can't miss us. Buffalo's Cafe. All right, Jonathan, this past week the uh, NCAA and the world of college sports got a little bit surprised by some maneuvers that who would have seen this one coming? Not the NCAA's watchful eye. But the FBI. Oh my goodness! Uh, I don't think I've ever seen a bigger bomb 
dropped on the sporting world in terms of uh, college than what we saw this week. And um, this is only the tip of the iceberg, in my opinion. And it is it is huge. It's far reaching. Um, and I think the FBI just basically went through round one of what they plan to do because. What they're going to do now is this is the front line, the people they got direct evidence on. Now they're going to start flipping these people, uh, all the coaches. They arrested four coaches. I think they uh, arrested another, uh, a couple of uh, AAU coaches. They arrest, arrested uh, Adidas representatives. Guess what these guys are going to do? Do you think they want to do time in prison? <laughs> no. So what are they going to do? Flip, 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 flip. So we're going to start seeing the fallout from that and what they turn over to the FBI and then we'll have kind of round two. Um, and so, and we already know that there are, uh, I believe, uh, something on the order of eight to 10 coaches that, that were named in the FBI report, not named, I should say, but, uh, identified in the report. They were all called coach one, coach two, coach three, seven universities, which I think we've got most of their, their identities at this point. And then, uh, somewhere on the on the neighborhood of at least 12 players that are that are that are out there and not sure how many more beyond that so this was just round one um we we know kind of some of the identities of some of the universities and coaches as i mentioned some of the ones that were arrested (laughs) so anyway uh so uh we've got a lot of uh a lot of information yet to come out on this. It's going to be a, It's really going to have a major impact on college basketball. Our first hotty toddy on Buzz Line. I guess that uh, nice lady didn't realize that Ole Miss lost 66 to three this past weekend. Yeah, either that or she had a lot of hotty toddies. Because <laughs> if I lost 66 to three, I'd probably still be drinking. Yeah, we probably. This is a good week if you have Tennessee fans, Ole Miss fans. Uh, who else got cream this past week? Oh gosh. Well, Virginia Duke? Tech lost, so you know Duke, they're, they're kind Virginia of Virginia Tech. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, don't uh, really. Hey, that's part of the fun we have here at Buzzline at Buffalo's Cafe. Speaking of fun, Paul Johnson, going back to what you're talking about with the NCAA brouhaha and the FBI involved too, he had the perfect quote. If you love the white and gold, his response to the whole issue going on with college basketball. And Jonathan, don't don't don't. That's yeah. So uh, he was on with uh, David Glenn out of North Carolina, and uh, Glenn asked him about this and what his thoughts were, and he said. And Johnson's response to his thoughts were, well, for the first time in my life, I'm glad we're with Russell. And, uh, and I actually had a, a tweet back to Seth Davis, who uh, uh, one of the basketball uh, kind of prognosticators or kind of analysts that uh, is out there. I believe he works, he's worked with CBS and Watt to the same effect. So um, Georgia Tech has absolutely got nothing to worry about um, in, in this. Uh, Passner has uh, been known to be a squeaky clean guy. He came from... Um, you know other programs so we he cleaned up memphis's program actually after. he did uh, you know as much as he could um, ironically he also came from arizona who's one of the, the schools that uh, was named in that but he has a reputation for being clean uh, certainly our football team has nothing to worry about and obviously the relationship with russell uh, nobody from russell's been paying off anybody to come to georgia tech are you I, sure about that i am I am so sure about that. I would I would stake a lo- I would stake a lot of money, and I'd even stake a lot of my own money on that one. So not too worried about it. But uh, all in all, uh, Georgia Tech really has nothing to worry about. I think their only impact is going to be, or is anybody they're recruiting going to be impacting, impacted, and and kind of what's going to be the fallout for the for the for the sport as a whole. Well, our crack research team that's joined us here at Buffalo's Cafe brought up a question about the contract that the Jackets are trying to get into with Adidas. And the question posed by Mike was, hey, maybe Georgia Tech will have some leverage now and, and, and can improve their stake in this deal because he thinks there's a chance that that contract's not signed, sealed, and delivered legally. Uh, it's possible, but... At this point, I think, you know, you've made your kind of agreement, and unless Adidas goes out of business. Yeah, unless Adidas goes out of business, and I, I don't think it'll be reopened. Uh, because on top of that, if you do it for that, what happens when something happens to Tech? Maybe they don't perform as well. Do you really want to upset the precedent that, you know, every time something goes bad on one side or the other that you reopen that contract? So it's good probably to just to, from a perspective of maybe you have a clause in there that says if they continue – if things get really bad or if they continue to do this kind of behavior, that then, then we can reopen uh, and, and they can do the same to us. But at this point, I don't think you'll I don't think anybody's going to touch the 
touch reopening it. Well, Jonathan, I know you and the GoJackets.com staff always have uh, people feeding you information, mm -hmm. sometimes good, sometimes completely fake news. Did you have any inkling that this was going to go down last week? Oh gosh, no. And okay. and you know, and and if you look at uh, you look at the reactions, even the folks that were arrested. Uh, which, you know, were right there in the middle of it. Nobody had any idea that this was coming. They were all, it was very, very much out of the blue. Um, there's not a person in this country that doesn't work for the FBI or the district attorney's uh, office, the U.S. district attorney's office, that, that knew it was coming. Um, so, I mean, all these people that got caught up in it, completely caught, flat-footed and, and unawares, nobody had a clue that this was coming. All right. Well, uh, that's good information there from Jonathan Lightbike. Mike, thank you very much for the good question there. And also thank you for supplying the buzz that's on my lapel this week. He gave me a buzz, and it looks beautiful and uh, kind of a special addition to my wardrobe here. Yes, it does look good. Yes. so makes you, It makes you look a lot better. It does. Well, it's easy to look better when you have one of the best logos in all of college sports Absolutely. on your lapel. And my son, Knowlton, who is watching this week on uh, BuzzLine's feed on Facebook Live, he loves Buzz. He, he actually wanted to take the Buzz that's here on our set, but uh, <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't let him do it. But he's watching, and I, I love you, and as I've told you before, go Jackets. All right, we'll take a break, come back with our final segment of BuzzLine from CRM Sports. Okay. Are we still broadcasting on WGAA out of Cedartown? We have been. I don't know. Okay. Um, I want to. They had a, a, a detective killed in action this week. Okay. And since they're on that, and I'm from there, I'd like yeah, to. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. If we close it out, I'd like Absolutely. to. Absolutely. So. Anytime, anytime something might have happened, no matter where. <laughs> All right. Now, find a little segment of this week's buzz line. You good? Yeah, I just wanted to get her. I, I know her last name's Hearn. I just, I'm okay. bl blanking on her front first name. I know. Yep, got it. Got okay. It. We're back on BuzzLine, our final segment of this week's show. Again, thank you to the great staff and the friendly faces that you can find here at Buffalo's Cafe. And a friendly white staff, a tremendous menu with burgers and all the chicken selections that are here, salads. Personally, I'm a fan of the desserts. And, you know, you got to eat your meal, but then you need to be rewarded with a good dessert. So all that's found right here at Buffalo's Cafe. And they have lots of locations, 14 Metro Atlanta locations of Buffalo's Cafe. Jonathan, as we kind of wrap things up here on this week's show, uh, we want to first and for foremost in this segment, I know you're from Cedartown, Georgia. Yes. And we've had a longtime affiliate, the Big Double A, WGAA, 1340 AM. And all the folks in Polk County that love the Jackets, we appreciate you listening. And, uh, unfortunately, some news from that area of Georgia this past week that uh, yeah, was very, very sad. Yeah, very unfortunate. Uh, Detective Kristen Hearn of the Polk County uh, um, Police uh, police Officer uh, Police Department um, was shot and killed by a, uh, by a couple that uh, had stolen a car out of Tennessee. Um, stole, she was shot outside west side of the town. And... Um, only 29 years old. She was a graduate of Rotmart High School right there in Polk County, and uh, um, very, very sad. And we wanted to express our condolences to the to the family and to the police department out there. Um, I I know the sheriff would, uh, you know, he was a year or two behind me in school, Johnny Motes, and and uh, and others in that department as well. So very, very sad. And we we really wanted to express our condolences to all of Polk County and especially Kristen's family. She left behind a husband and also. Uh, a young child. Are you aware of any kind of GoFundMe type thing for uh, them? I I believe I don't don't know of it yet, but okay. uh, there probably is one floating around there, and I can probably track that down, and we can add that to the to the to the Buzzline page at right. some point. We appreciate that, and keep the, her family in your thoughts and prayers. Just a very sad story, and we want to remember the blue. The blue oftentimes not getting the uh, attention and respect uh, that they are due and and they lose lives just like soldiers in combat every day sadly all over the country so 
want to keep that in mind. Jonathan, a native son of Cedartown, uh, wanting to share that with us here. The Jackets this week, they do not have a game, Mr. Leifite. Yep, they were off. Uh, originally, uh, this game was uh, scheduled to be, uh, this weekend was scheduled to be off because there was going to be a Thursday night affair uh, down with the Hurricanes in Miami. Uh, of course, we all know the Hurricane Irma kind of changed those plans, so now Miami will be playing Florida State. Uh, as a result, uh, in order to make it fair, they moved the game from Thursday night to Saturday. Um, and so uh, the Jackets will be taking on the uh, Hurricanes on the on the Saturday the 14th instead of Thursday. Um, I'm really kind of liking playing the Hurricanes after they play Florida State. That is always a physical bruising affair, and usually uh, it seems like every year that the Hurricanes tend to fold after that game, because they, particularly when they get beat. So uh, as far as I'm concerned, playing them after floor, right after Florida State is a, is a good thing for the Jackets. Um, of course, Florida State isn't exactly uh, Florida State this year, as we've seen in their, their first three games. Hey, they won this past weekend. I didn't think they'd win at Wake Forest, but they somehow pulled that one out. And, and you know what? They got outplayed by Wake Forest. Wake Forest played better than them, and I'm not sure exactly how they managed to pull that rabbit out of their hat, but they did. Um, to their credit, they did. Um, I, it, you know, this game will be uh, against Miami will be in Tallahassee, so they always have a fighting chance when they're playing at Doak Campbell. But uh, I'm expecting, a, I'm hoping for a bruising affair, and, and I'm hoping that Miami comes out of that one flat for us because <laughs> I, we are desperate and overdue for a victory down in, uh, down in uh, Miami Gardens. And as I told you before the show, of course we want the Jackets to win. We want the Jackets to have the best season ever. But just in case that doesn't happen, if, if Miami somehow – found their way to the national championship and won it, at least Jacket fans could find a little bit of humor knowing that the team in Athens got rid of their head coach and uh, they in his year two he wins the national championship. Yeah, that would be that would be kind of amusing if that happened. So uh, but nonetheless I'm not a big Hurricanes fan either. <laughs> no, so. I'm not either, but just, just for the <laughs> So there's kind of a downside to the that. The classic one as well. city yeah. uh, corral. It would be kind of funny that they fire the coach and then he goes down there and wins in his second year. So yep. if there's any positives. But the first positive needs to come this uh, next weekend when the Jackets and you down on South Beach, of course, uh, going down there to cover. I will, I'm actually will not be on South Beach. We're going to Fort Lauderdale, so ah. so we'll be uh, we'll be uh, which is not too far from the uh, from the stadium. So we'll be in Fort Lauderdale. Actually, be down there from Thursday through Sunday. So my buddy Rod McKenzie will be filling in for me on Buzzline following that game. Okay. Well, again, for all the Jackets coverage, it's GoJackets.com. It is the premier website for anything Georgia Tech. It's part of the CBS Interactive family. And Jonathan, Rod McKenzie, and more recruiting is always a hot topic on the hive. And you need to go to GoJackets.com and check it all out. Do you all have a special right now for folks uh, who want to give it a, a trial not, run? Not currently. Well, there's the usual special, which is seven days free. Okay. And then follow that by a uh, by regular fee. You either do monthly, uh, six month, or an annual subscription. Ah, all right. Well, keep that in mind. You know, my birthday's coming up, Jonathan. You need to keep me in mind. All right. I do. It was in August, just in case you were wondering. Uh, this is Buzzline. Hey, great job, and good to be with you again. And thank you to all of us, all of you who have watched us on Facebook Live, also to our great affiliates and all of our listeners, uh, all of you who get the show via GoJackets.com. Until next week, Jonathan, have a great week. Yep, you betcha, and Go Jackets. All right, Go Jackets. We'll be right back next week on Buzzline.